You must speak what you want to see. You speak what you want to see. You don't have the luxury of mismanaging words. It is indiscipline for a new creation to talk anyhow. There is no weakness in me. There is no weakness in me. I'm intelligent. I'm intelligent. I have the life of God. I have the life of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said you must use your words to your advantage. The winds of life may be fierce, but the man whose voice is louder than the winds will get to the destination he has been planned to get to. I told you yesterday from James chapter 3 that the Bible says no matter how fierce the wind is, the ship is controlled by the pilots using a ruder. Regardless of how fierce, and I can tell you that the wind on the sea is fierce. So we say regardless of the fierceness, the boat can be intimidated into going in the direction of the wind. The, the boat or the ship goes in the direction of the ruder, regardless of the wind. And God is comparing that to your mouth. Saying to you, you determine where you go. So when you know the plan of God for your life, you use your mouth to your advantage. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So a believer should never be caught saying I'm weak. A believer should never be caught saying I don't know what to do. In the midst of the fierce winds, when I mean fierce winds, the issues that you may be facing in your life, in your ministry, whatever it is you're going through, they can be compared to fierce winds. In the midst of these fierce winds, you are not permitted. Let me say it that way. It is the discipline of it. It's a discipline of the new creation. A pilot or the captain of a ship cannot say that, oh, man, this, this wind is so fierce, man, you know what? Let's just leave the ruder. Let the wind take us where we are going to. And some people can be like that. They say, where are we going to? It's where the world is going. <laughs> For example, let me let me hear it. Um, there's a flu. Oh, there's a flu. I may soon catch a flu. We will soon catch a flu. <laughs> that, the winds of the world, if we are just going everywhere. You will realize that if the ship, if the um, the the pilot wants to turn the ship in another direction, he becomes very fierce in his turning. He's turning. He's turning. He's turning. If you have watched um, what do you call it, Titanic before, you realize that although he didn't turn well at all time, he was turning that thing, turning it, turning it, turning it. So the the thing was turning, but he still hit the side. But do you know something? If they had started turning earlier, they wouldn't have hit that rock, right. that iceberg. All right. You know, some people will just enter into things. <laughs> they just get into, ah, what are we with? Hey, hey, I'm like, I'm just going. Ah, no, it's not now, nah, brother. You have been saying it a long time. Yeah. You have been turning things. Mm -hmm. I was telling my church, as, as, as at maybe October, I was telling the church I was pastoring, you gotta start to talk like a child. You gotta start to talk about 2017. Yeah. You gotta start to talk. You, 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 you don't get to 2017. That's like, ah, 2017 is my help, please. I'm gonna do it. You, you talk in front of me. Titanic that it, like you just see the iceberg just like that. Said, uh, uh, I drive a gun, the nature of God, the Lord is in me. The, no, no, the king of God that they see, there is still a time for, for planting and growing. Come on. So you must have been saying it. Come on. It's so wonderful a kingdom to have to understand that you can have what you say. Wow. Mark 11, verse 24, you will have what you say. And that's why we always teach people about covetousness, which is our real teaching. These are all just yesterday's meeting. We did our because a believer can get anything, but not all things mm. are expedient. Mm. Do we can get it? I always tell people there is nothing I cannot get if I want it, but will it take me out of the problem and plan of the Lord for my life? Because God did not mind what you will have what you see. So if I want to have it, the only thing I believe a believer cannot have is another person's wife. You cannot have what you can't have. It. <laughs> Say it from today to tomorrow, you can't have it. <laughs> that one is a personal position. You see, you, have, you know, because it happened to somebody. And listen, when we say you can't have what you say, that's why we regulate it within the framework of the written word and believing rightly. I was teaching in my local church. I say, you, you, for example, you, you, my wife is already my wife. You cannot say that you want to fit her. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> She's mad. I take it. I convert it. I move. She's mad. You go the, the window, yeah, it's mad. It's mad, it's mad, it's mad. Hallelujah. Rakabora the moon. No, you're out of your door. You see that now? But in the issues of life that concern your life, don't leave life to the fierce winds. It can drive you anywhere. Anywhere. That is why you realize that the captain has a destination before he moves. He will, this is a boat, this ship, this ship is coming, is leaving from maybe London. Where are we going? Anywhere it takes us. <laughs> Please, can you enter? Is that what you hear? Yeah. <laughs> so why will he have a specific de 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 destination? Because he can steer. Yeah. He can steer. He can steer. That's why there's a specific definition, destination. So you can get somewhere if you know how to stare. Mm -hmm. Are you getting the point now? Yes. So you will be displaying your words. Don't say, ah, that's our small ministry. You know, we are just growing. Ha, 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 ha. No. Never dis you want a ministry, never disesteem anything you want to grow. Mm -hmm. This small me, which small you? This is not a statement to make you proud. It's a statement not to disesteem you. Don't talk what you really don't want to see. I, I tell people, I, when, we are, when we are done with the earth, the head will know that we came. You, 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 that's how we talk. That's how, that's how we talk. That's how we talk. When we are bragging, we are bragging on God. We will have yeah. what we say. Yep. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to balance it. Like my church, can I remember that I taught for three weeks. I taught for three weeks before I talked about this faith. Can I remember? I was saying that I'm not teaching about faith now because I did not want to raise in this people. Because if you hear that you can get anything, people just start trying to get everything. <laughs> you start getting things that you put, we get the Bugatti, we get the house, we get the No, 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 understand it. We're going to teach about it. Use your words to your advantage. Say, I'm using my words from today. I'm using my words from today. To my advantage. Understand something. Don't wait for someone to encourage you or motivate you. Mm -hmm. So maybe you know the word works. You, yeah. the word, no, you must be convinced that it works. Yeah. You must be convinced that it works. Yeah. The farmer that is planting seed is absolutely convinced sure. that it works. He is not trying for me. Mm -hmm. sure, sure. He is not trying for me. Don't say, ah, well, oh God, what's happening? We have been planting. We have been. Is that what the farmer does? No. If you say it till you see it, if you don't see it, keep saying it. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to go around and tell our disciples, we're going around the world. We are going to nations. Yeah. We are going to cities. Yeah. The word of God yeah. will be spread about to yeah. us. Yeah. And men will be raised. Yeah. That's what they want to see. Yeah. Men will be raised. Yeah. Men will be raised. Yeah. Evangelists will be raised. Yeah. Pastors will be raised. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. They will be raised. Yeah. It might be dark in the world, but great light is emerging from us. Yeah. Am I going to believe in a man? So the word is prevailing. The word is prevailing. Men are being healed. Men are being chained. Men are being transformed in the name of Jesus. You say doors are opening. Doors in cities are opening. Doors in nations are opening. The word is going. And men are being chained. People are being raised. That's what we talk, brother. You don't wait for the door. You use your mouth to open the doors and wait. And when you open the door, you walk into it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Doors are opened. Doors are opened. Doors are opened. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the kingdom life. You can even in your personal life, it's working out for my faith. Men are positioned to help me. When I don't know what to do, things, people, situations, they are right. To help me when I'm in a straight, I don't know what to do. God raises men for me in the name of Jesus. I am not one that is discouraged and discomforted in this world. I win, I win. Men, doors are opening up for me. I can't stay this way. No way, God. I'm not staying jobless. Doors are opening. Men are working for me. Hallelujah. Don't wait and let things happen and say, Oh God. Me, no, 
advantage. I'm having a driving house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Company. Amen. Number two, company, company, quick, we gotta go. Company. I told you about this yesterday. What did we say about company yesterday? Do not be do not be deceived. Evil communications. Watch your company. He said, we said also in Proverbs 13, verse 20, that the um who eat and works with the wise, companion of fools. Brilliant. We said also study to show yourself. So the disciplined disciple must study also. It's very important that you watch this company. Your company will affect your life. I gave you examples like Lot. Lot lost everything he had from good company. He got good, he got all the wealth from good company. Abraham. He lost all the wealth through bad company. Friends with Sodomites and Gomorites. All right, to the point that he also he lost control of his house and his possession and all the animals. He lost his wife. We said to you, Jonathan also died on in the battle through bad company. Bad company, his daddy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We said to you that Solomon. Solomon was a very wise man that became one of the most foolish men through what bad company. His wife swear the issue in this situation. We say, we said, you see, the Bible is human. We said, Ahab was a man who died a stupid death because of his wife called Jezebel. You realize that man is a function of the company he keeps. We can go on. We see Je we told you Jerusalem at two almost died because of God, bad company. God just have this one. Israel, anytime, <laughs> anytime, anytime the people, anytime uh, Israel, Israel, the Philistines wanted to defeat the Israel, they sent them bad company. Strange women. You hear strange women, strange women entering the camp and then the people be defeated. You would realize that if you read even the Old Testament, the Bible says that the children of Israel came out with mixed multitudes. And this mixed multitude were the ones that first started the complaining. They were the ones that started, what, what, what is this man? Man, what? What is this? What kind of thing is this? It was the mixed multitude that started complaining. The company that you give. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we are going into things to flee. As a believer, you must understand that the Bible talks about the things to flee. In this situation, God is not saying demonstrate your faith. <laughs> God is not saying, I mean, God is not saying speak in tongues. God is saying run the race. <laughs> Let me put just this one. Let me tell you something. A lady called me up and said that. And the first one I want to talk about is because the Bible talks about it. In first Corinthians chapter 6, I'll be very fast at that about how they are like teaching about communication and all that. When I don't want you to grow, you leave the room. Yeah, don't talk about all this. But first Corinthians chapter, I think it's 6, verse um, 18. It's very, very apt. It tells you that flee communication. A lady called me and said, You know what, Pastor, my problem is that, you see, and if I get Christian, feel with the Holy Spirit, I won't go on missions for my issues communication. And I told her that, where do you have this fornication? Is that the bus stop? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't first get what I was saying. I said, is that the bus stop? She said, no. I said, okay. She now I said, see, and when it comes to fornication, it's not about big man of God, small man of God. I go on missions, I speak in tongues. If you are in the same place all the time with someone that you are attracted to or even not attracted to, you are putting yourself in this position. It's not about strength. It's that God did not say everybody free fornication apart from those that go on mission. <laughs> <laughs> and you see the word they use flee. You know the word they use flee? It's the same word that is used for resist the devil and he shall flee from you. He says, run as in terror. <laughs> Meaning, you are in a place together with somebody. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! You know, if, if that is not them, this is not big man of God. There is no brain in tongue. There is no. Mm -mm. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Are you getting it? Don't think 
these are some people are strong in this thing. And then some of us are just weak. I, I can handle it. And, 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 and some people trust in their flesh. I can handle it. I can, I'll tell the story of, uh, I'll just give her name, name as Sister S. Sister S at one time. Yeah, it's not Okay. Sister Z. <laughs> Nobody can have that name. That's Sister Z. Sister Z, Sister Z was a situation, in this situation then, years ago, one of our fiery, when, years ago, when we first started preaching, years ago, something about around 2005, yeah. Yes, very. She was even hotter than all the pastors. <laughs> we are praying. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've told this story a lot, but I want to, I want to emphasize it. Because that was one situation, it changed the way I, I do ministry. Mm. And then, I tell you what, just realized that when we want to pray, it's as if they'll say, You guys will pray. You know, we will want to pray. We will, just you will pray. I noticed that this lady is not as very bad as what happened. Uh, you know, and then years later, years later, she came to me one day after we had left. But she came to me one day and said, There's something I need to tell you. Many years ago, when we used to be in Guinea, and we used to do ministry work, one day, one of the souls that we were, the boy is a bad boy, but he gave the life to Christ. And so, I just said, let me go and do follow up. <laughs> I did follow up. Wait, now it's not your fault. They say, they say, I don't want to spend time on flu. I did the follow up alone. Mm. But I believe that was dear. It's not me. Sister Zed of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> she went to the bad boy's house. Mm. Mm. And then, well, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the service. You know, perhaps the deep preach and all that. Okay, I was blessed and all those kind of things. Then one by, I don't know what ring team. You can't say it's the deep devil or <laughs> When Sister Z was in the wall, her soft spot was selling deal. Oh, my God. When, <laughs> when you play, selling me. <laughs> 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 the moment you play that in the world, in those days, for Sister Z, she's not like in Ghana. <laughs> so, for some funny reason, I don't know what happened, that particular song came on. Ooh. Then it became, ah, this song, when I was in the world, <laughs> to wear church, to cut the long story short, it bow. That's it. Happened. <laughs> when she woke up was when she realized that virtual oh. letter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now listen, and she lived a life of condemnation for about nine years. Oh. Listen, it's only one thing I want to bring out of that story. We were just all that would have avoided that was just flee. Oh. The moment you are hearing it, you are hearing it, you don't know, you want to say the grace and you want to say the grace of the Holy Spirit. Sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The brother will say, Sister, Sister said, is that it? Ah, the Lord is good. You have seen a disaster. You, it's not about big man of God or small man of God or anything. It's just flee. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, flee. flee. There is no see. You see, let me tell you something. What the devil does, it's not about God right now. Now, when it comes to fornic um, fornication and sex and all those kind of things, the truth is that the issue here, as we see from the writings of Paul, is not it is a function of honor. The believer is on, 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 must, so, must understand that his body is now of the Lord. He must see his body like that and choose to honor that body. Mm. You treat your body dishonorably mm. by allowing anybody there. Mm. Or you, it's, a, it's, not a matter, it's a matter of just dishonor. Mm. That is why you see his response in so it is, someone say, I honor my body. I honor my body. Simple, that's it. I'm not going to spend time on this um, um, topic. Um, I 
know your people don't forget because I know that in the end the story of Sister Z. First Corinthians chapter six twenty seven. But six. See what he says. He's about honor, verse 15. He says, No, ye not. So it's a knowledge problem. Don't you know? Do you know that if not, if you don't know the value of a diamond, you can treat it anyhow? Yeah. You must know the value of a diamond. It just looks like a tool stone for you to be able to treat it with value. Yeah. You know, value is a function of perception. Oh. Do you know that? Value, some people, they have just one shoe. That shoe is like eternal life. <laughs> they can't even share it with anybody. They value that. They are, you, you are the one that put value on something. Mm. Yeah. You, some people, they value the eh, husband. They value wife. Some people, wife. They, they, you, you taught the wife. They, they slap me on her there. Because I know she did. I offended you to slap me. See that you should be. They value their wife. Some people, so you are the one that places value on something. So God is now giving you information to do what? So you can place value on your body. He's not, he, God is not saying, ah, fornicator, fornicator, fornicator. That's not the scripture. In the scripture, God tells you to give you information to put value on your body. The moment you understand value of your body, you know that nobody is always dragging with the lady that has one shoe that puts value on hey, you. You have to need to use my shoe to play ball. Like you know that when you're passing the road, you're like Woolwich, who are playing ball, and then the ball passes in front of you. You know if you value your, the shoe that you're wearing, maybe it's the only shoe. You know, say, ah, yo, that's your ball. <laughs> you don't kick it with that only shoe. It's Christmas shoe, Easter shoe, Sunday shoe, work shoe, only shoe. Value is on it. So you don't do anyhow, not because of some laws. I'm not here to say don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. but. Value. So even when you are teaching the people you are teaching, young people, don't at, um, attack fornication and all these kind of things from the point of view of the law. You just raise fornicators up. Oh, listen, listen, all you need, all you need is to help people see the value in the body and leave them to see what they do with their body. See, and that is what Paul did to the Corinthian church where there was high level immorality he helped them see value people that are teaching youths as well you must let the people see value in their body not condemning their actions because their actions is a function of lack of value so the point is get the gospel to them to help them see value mm. children church teachers teens teachers the youth generation today are suffering from a value problem it's not. It's more of a value problem. The, a lot of Christians today, we get, I think, today was telling me about a lot of people in different places, youths that are messing up and all this kind of thing. It's principally that Christians. It's principally a value problem, and the correction is ensuring they understand their value. What is their value? It's there. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Say value. Value. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Is it, is it right? You know some people, the way they are, they are writing, but you'll be feeling the what? What? You put a, 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 a what? Be like, what? Be like, know you know that he which is joined to a harlot is one body, for two sayeth it shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So he's saying, brother, sister, don't you understand that you are one with the Lord? So do you want to take the idea that you are one with the Lord and don't just leave you with everybody? You want to join God to everybody? You are one with the Lord. Value, you are one with the Lord. That body, you are one. So that's what he's saying. So he said, so look at it. The nurse says, to help you flee fornication. What, every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. So you are sinning against that body that is one with the Lord. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue of honor and value. Then he says, verse 19, What? Know ye not that your body is a temple? Say value. value. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, 
which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price, a value. value. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Say value. value. If everyone that is a new creation teacher teaches about this to our youth, do you know the kind of thing that will happen? Mm -hmm. It will be difficult for a man to sleep with a lady mm -hmm. because she has a high sense of value. Mm -hmm. It will be difficult for a man to want to sleep with a lady mm -hmm. because she has a sense of value. So the issue right here is not, and people approach it from sin. Mm -hmm. It's not a sin issue, it's a value issue. Mm -hmm. When we get people to understand value, you know what? You don't dictate the behavior to somebody that has value for something. Mm -hmm. You don't dictate his behavior. Look at so, people like women. You know the value may be jewelry? Are you always with a woman that values jewelry? You realize that you don't need to tell her. You don't see her jewelry in the parlor. And the children are not playing with the jewelry. See mommy's jewelry. It's 32 karat gold. Can we tear? Let's cut it into two. That might be your last day in the house. You see, the woman has a box. Every other thing in the house can be everywhere. But a jewelry, how many people have jewelry box in this place? Value. You put it there. In fact, some people always wash their jewelry. You see that now? Do you always wash everything? Some people in the house, they've not painted their house now. It's going to get here. They're in their jewelry. They're jewelry. Every day they tell me somebody, why do you wash it? I know my wife, I think she does this kind of things. It's all value. Are you getting my point? It's not the sin. Hey, sin, sin. No. The truth be told, the sin has been paid for. It's value. Yes, yes, yes. That's why approaching it from sin is a wrong point. Yeah. You can't get so those 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 all oh, the person will not do is you not sin for three months. Mm -hmm. right. Canada, one month no sex. <laughs> I'm Two months no sex. That's not it. It's valid. Pray the living Jesus. Things to flee. So number one, we set for the Number two, we talk about money now. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians. Remember, I told you that in the new covenant. God gives us our doctrinal standpoint. God gives us our doctrinal standpoint from where? Yes. Are we together in this place? From where? Yes. First Timothy chapter 6. Now the issue of money has been one issue that has been raging in the body of Christ, and that is why we need to deal with it. We, we need to deal with it in, in the context of you must know what to do with money. Let me tell you. All of us here, would, you know, because these teachings were inspired by the Holy Spirit, all of us here would have money. But you must understand how to use money. Because if you do not know that, see, God does not have a problem with you having money. God has a problem. God does not have a problem with things. God has issues with what you use things to do. You know, people are always, uh, that is the mistake people make. We are the generation that said, Television was evil. Are we all here in this place together? Yes. Television was evil. Nobody should watch television. Television was evil and those kind of things. Th nothing in itself is evil. It's what you use things. You know there's some people that go to Facebook because they are blessed when they are left. Mm -hmm. Some people go there and they can be um, engaged in um, gossip, mm -hmm. lying, and all those kind of stuff. Things are not the issue, but what you use things to do. Money. God don't think God is one God that does not want someone to have money. God is so, God is about what you use things to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Now let's see something because of our age. Because of this age that we are in. Luke 6. Luke 12. Luke 12. I'm gonna I'm gonna start somewhere else before that. Let's go to Luke 12. We need to see for ourselves. It's gonna be a good point for us to start. Verse 15. Luke 12, verse 15. Are we there? Verse 15. I'm going to read from here. And he said, now, this scripture, every believer must know it. It will help your thinking. It will help your priorities. Luke 12, verse 15. And he said unto them, take heed. Tell them all, take heed. And beware of covetousness. Am I hearing someone talk? Beware of covetousness. Then see what he says. For a man's life 
consists not in the abundance of the things which he I know you gotta talk to me. Which he possesses. Which he possesses. Listen, listen. This is the age we are in. The age we are in is opposite this scripture. That is why it's quite important for us as disciples. So you understand the signs and the times. The, 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 the age we are in says a man's life is about his the media says a man's life is about his possessions. Everybody says a man's life is about his possessions. People even respect people based on their possessions. That's why James was saying when someone comes to a church, you put the poor people, he said they should in the back. You put the rich ones, he said they should in your phone. He said, Are you not calm? In spiritual things, that you have money doesn't count anything. Mm. Say someone has money becomes the, 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 the head of a, oh. a head of evangelism. <laughs> <laughs> no. Money is not an issue that we is not an issue in the new creation church of where would we use it for any kind of leverage because the new creation church the body of christ is a spiritual body and if we don't function by the a man's possession the bible says when anyone when you look at people think of people relate with people based on what they have you're also functioning in that thing called conversion covetousness when you see a person and I look at hmm. what shoe? Yeah. You know the thing they call sizing him up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a spirit of the world. Yes. It's anti-Christ. A believer will not be looking at something like that. Ah, Gucci shoe, Fendi bag, Brazilian. Eh, hmm, nah, ah, just stay there. She's just like this man. She's worth about six hundred pounds. Come on. How do you know? So you, there's something wrong in the way you're thinking. Mm. Sure. A man's life. You see, this is crucial. A new creation must get it. Your relevance, even in spiritual things, it has nothing to do with your body. Do you know that if people understood this, they would not be this rat race. People take money as God now. Mm. Ah! I love you, Lord. I give you praise. You are my God. I look, sir, there's a job. 30 pounds an hour, Sunday morning. Ah! <laughs> Tell me, wait, wait, wait. Dito, I'm coming. Lord, we can't be doing on Sunday anymore. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry. Is it like? Right? <laughs> he was just singing a psalm now mm. by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I've heard that song anywhere before. Mm -hmm. It was a spiritual song that just God just gave me. I just read it. Oh. You are the mighty one. <laughs> but he had money like this, he became kind of straight. <laughs> 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 Now, you see, what is the issue with it? Now, it's a spirit of the age, it's a spirit of the Western world. It, it, everyone, he says, um, don't think about it. A man's life is, it is a covetous spirit, a covetous nature, a covetous mindset. And you must consciously detox yourself from it. A man's life is not in his possessions. What's kind of work? You've been looking about a man come out of this car, you are no good gun that is rich. <laughs> come on! Come on! A man's life, you must learn if you are going to use wealth well, you must learn to disesteem it. Mm -hmm. Write it down. It, 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 a believer is fighting about money right now. Don't it's not a believer. Oh, don't try me, oh, don't try me, oh, don't try me. This, you begin my money, you will fight here. Yeah. I will pull my shirt for you. Forget this. Come on. Don't try me. A believer, a man's life is not in the abundance of what he has. The question is this, like I always tell people, if you become a millionaire or a billionaire, will it change the way you do the things you do? If it changes anything about you, there is something wrong. You've put your trust in things. A man's life, he, he, you've put your trust in things. You see, and when your trust is in things, it becomes your master. It becomes your director. 
it becomes your everything is about money, money, and this system, even this UK system, is like that. Yeah, yeah. You get in the power, this one, that one, everything. What can I get from it? It's, it's, no, your worth is not by your early possession. The worth of a Christian is in who he is in Christ. Can I get a believing amen? Amen. Can I get a believing amen? Amen. God shows us how to deal with money. First, Timothy chapter 6. Please remember the scripture we just quoted and ensure that, remember the scripture we just quoted and ensure that you remember it. In fact, there is a, there is a parable after that scripture. There's a parable after that um, Luke 12 verse 15. He said there was a starting man called the rich man. He had a lot of money. I don't even know that parable. He had a lot of money. He was very big. And he now said, what shall I do? What shall I do? I will break down my present bands and build bigger bands. And I will say to my soul, take a rest. And then, you know what he said? Take a rest. And the Bible says, the word says, oh fool. Your soul is actually coming home tonight. It says, who will now have these possessions? That is the life of a man who is rich to himself, but not rich towards God. You know, God did not have a problem with him building bigger bands, but God had a problem. God had an issue with the fact that his security was in his things. The fact that he was thinking of himself alone. When God says he was not rich towards God, God was not thinking about him as God. When God talks about God in that sense, he's talking about the people of God. He didn't care about, if you look at that story, you don't hear any other person but him. It was all about him. And that is the, the, the bane, you can write this on, the bane of the Christian life is selfishness. What will injure the Christian is not really the devil, it's selfishness. The bane, B-A-N-E. The problem with the Christian life is selfishness. That's why God does not cause us, call us to be self-conscious. He calls us to be Christ-conscious. Christ the bane of the of a Christian life, meaning the problem you can encounter is selfishness. I me, I me, I me, I me, I me, I me, I me. Praise the living Jesus. Remember we are talking about things to flee. So I'm reading First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. We are reading from verse 9. But now, I will read from verse 6 for context. It says to us, and listen, I'm talking to the disciples. You will remember this teaching verse important. It says, but godliness and contentment is great gain. What is it? Great gain. Sons say, I'm content. I'm content. I'm walking in my race. I'm walking in my race. With contentment. contentment. Come on, talk with contentment. With contentment. It says godliness with godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and this something will carry nothing out. He's trying to, this scripture now, this man is on the post, he's going on, he's disesteeming money for you. Yes. Say, so don't think that money is, it doesn't have any eternal consequence. However, if you use it rightly, you can help people get, um, get eternal glory. Meaning, if you use your money, for the, imagine you use your money to earn the gospel. And many people hear it and get saved and are changed and are transformed. That's a good way to use your money. And many other things. Look at it. He now says to Ross, don't, don't, he said, don't spend a good bulk of your money on things that do not have eternal consequences. Oh. But goodness we get with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we will carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be content with. Wow. But they which will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into the foolish lust, we drown men in destruction and perdition. Now look at verse 10. For the love, someone say, for the love of God is the, the root of all evil. Or let me let me put it in the original Greek rendering. For the love of money is the root of all these evils. What evils? He talks about it in the verse before. Foolish, hurtful lusts, destruction, and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all these evils, which some coveted after. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But thou man of God, what are you to do? Flee these things. Flee these things. Remember we're talking about things to flee. Money. You must ensure you don't make money your God. 
Remember? Remember? Yeah. What a man. Where a man puts his treasure. Where a man puts his treasure. Where a man puts his treasure. I always tell people who are struggling, who are struggling to do, to put, to, to you know, who are struggling with God and put it to and the things of God and in their local church. I always tell them, put your money in your local church. You realize that you're concerned about your local church. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you see a believer that is like a tacical with his local church, his heart is not there. Why? Because the money is not there. His money is not there. Or he's a believer that takes change to church. <laughs> That's just it. Ensure that you that is one way to channel your heart to the things of God. These 16 things. Don't make them your goal. If you don't get a shoe, you will not die. Mm-hmm. In 14 years, the shoe that you are going to be, you will not be wearing it. It's not mm-hmm. a prayer, it's a truth. Mm-hmm. So don't die because of everything. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. But use your money. And to use your money and disesteem, be disesteem, disesteem those things. You have, you have, and that makes you different from the world. Different from the world. My son, Antonio, we hear some testimonies about people and how they are using money. See, believer, we take another believer's money and run. <laughs> I, I don't know, we don't know where this thing, where I was telling one of our good friends about our good family friends, I was telling her about one man that made me suffer when I was growing up. I don't know if it's a dead or a dead. His the name is Uncle Timo. You know what Uncle Timo did? Yes. He, put, he, he came and said, ah, there's a business. He told my parents, there's a business. Ah, this business will work. Who we'll do this? Who we'll do that? My mom had a loan facility because she was working at the bank. I want to take a loan. My mom said, ah, this, this, we will pay back. No, 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 no. They gave Uncle Timo the money. We did not see a good thing again. <laughs> see? <laughs> <laughs> Did it! We're not still eating yam and oil in my house. We could not afford egg anymore. Because my parents now have to be paying the loan back. Uncle, we don't know where Uncle Timo is. Maybe this year we hear this message. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah! The believer! And other believers are in trouble because they, they say, oh, well, you know, you know there are believers today that say, I can't do business with another believer. They don't do standard practice. They just not be believe. No. <laughs> we, we must have to talk about it because people esteem money. When it comes to integrity, people, nah, brothers and sisters, he says, flee these things. Don't make money your God. A good name is better than silver and gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In ministry too. In ministry. In life. Use money to be a blessing to people. Use money to raise people. I want you to have a testimony that by the time you leave this earth, they will know you came. Mm-hmm. It's not about you won't, you are, you are not raising present day Mobutus. <laughs> in Mobutus as a circle. All he had was for himself. <laughs> it is a president. In, 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 in his village, in his village, you see, he built wrong or he built wrong with there. He built airport there. He built everything there. He, he was in power. He would not want to leave power. He was just there in power. He didn't want to leave power. Go back to Zai today. Yeah. Is cockroach and ant that in all those planes to be. Oh, and the country was in a mess. He stopped, he stacked up riches for only himself. But be the kind of believer mm-hmm. that uses money with a purpose. Build lives, mm-hmm. help lives. Mm-hmm. That is the purpose of money. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. 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 God instructs us. You, you can stop it and start it again. Because we can't stop now. God instructs us. God instructs us. God instructs us on how to use money. He charges. God is not in, he's not, he doesn't have a problem with rich people in the church. We'll see what he tells them. First Timothy 6, verse 17. 
1 Timothy 6, verse 17. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 6, verse 17. Quick, we gotta go. Quick, we gotta go. Charge them. Are we all there? I want everybody to see it yourself because this is a crucial teaching. Convertiousness is a loss of the flesh. So it is not something that enters you. Say, no, no, no. Somebody just doing as I saw that lady's blue shoe. I blue shoe. I must get it. No, no, it's not me. It's a decision. It's a loss of the flesh. Yeah. God calls it idolatry, unsatiable desire for things, money. God has not called it that. Is a loss of the flesh. Look at God instructs us. First Timothy 6 17. Are you there? Yes, sir. Charge them. Charge them. No, don't worry. That are rich in this world. That they should not be high minded. Brother, your money must not change your behavior. But it must it, 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 it ought to change how you are available to help others. He said, charge them that they should not be high-minded. Believer that can, who come to church, they are the Lord. Parangada Baba, Lord do it. We are going on the world. Disciples are rising, did it? He just gets a contract. I know it's kind of things. He comes into the church. I And he sees people pray. I will you know what they have got rich here. <laughs> God is good. He doesn't, he doesn't talk any arrogance. Ah, brother, brother, brother James, what happened? It's just the goodness of that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so everybody say, we are praying right now. Let's design the spiritual gifts. You'll be hearing Barkus. Kabbalad. Kabbalodos. Hallelujah. You see that he has become high minded. He has put his spirit. So God is saying, charge them. So we must tell you. Mm. Your, if your money changes your status, stop in your tracks and repent. Mm -hmm. Say, no, Lord, I refuse to. I refuse to be. You can be able to talk. To me. No, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no, no, this, no, this is not my nature. I don't break things when you put up your money. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I refuse to be high minded. Meekness is a fruit of the spirit. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is a fruit of love. Glory to God. I, I work in me. I work in the light of God. I'm not going to exalt myself above what is me just because of money. Money is to be used. It must never tell you how the look. You talk to yourself. You know. I don't. You say. Don't look at people. To say. See you. Do, do, do you. Do you know who I am? I might be. Do, do, do you. Yeah, do you know who I am? Do you know me? Do you want to know? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He says, you become high-minded. The same believer that was in law. Now these things might be funny, oh you gotta think about them. Because it says chat, it's a decision. It's not a spirit. Yes. It's a decision. You know what you are doing. Yes. That's why you know what you are doing. You know you just made the thing go, it kept coming to your head. So charge them. He says, not to be high-minded. What does it mean to be high-minded? Not trust in uncertain. God calls earthly money. Uncertain. Riches. Every time God talks about earthly wealth, He always qualifies it. And when He will qualify it, most of the time, He says, uncertain riches. When you hear riches in the Bible, He's talking about who we are in Christ. Every time He's talking about earthly wealth, He will qualify it before He writes riches. He said, Why? Because He can be here tomorrow. He can be here today and do what goes tomorrow. Did you hear about the subprime price crisis in 2007? People were di diving from 14 story building because all their, their stocks had crashed. On Saturday, my point. On certain riches. He said, charge them. Now, this is important because God, if money can be. Why is it that even in ministry, you see people preach money? If we have time, I'm going to get there. People preach peace because of this same thing. 
They preach money. They talk money. Every prophecy is by money. You want to live long? You want the blessings of Psalm 103 or 103? That's 103 pounds, brother. Oh, Hallelujah. Why did all why did all these things come from? Because you think that well, why are we This is where it comes from. In sometimes inspiration comes from the mind. You see the spirit. Ah, God is talking to me now. God is, the, does anybody want the blessing of Psalm 91? Yes. <laughs> 91 man, bro. Oh. Okay. The one, you say that, the you one say thousand dollars. You, you say, you say, you say that, you say that. Uh, what do you call it? You say, uh, you know, um, okay. it's the leading of the spirit. Oh. There is covetousness that enter. You want this? I'm going to speak a blessing now. You want it? The thousand shall fall by the side. You want it? Ten thousand. <laughs> right. oh. hey. it shall not come near the car. car. You want that? That no. is eleven thousand pounds. <laughs> we are not talking. <laughs> okay. You think all this is what we're doing? You think I will not pay pressure at the back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can use your credit card, you can use your credit card. Hallelujah. See, that is why we're talking about money. You are being prepared for the times to come. Praise God. Oh. Look at it. He said to them, don't be high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. The only time God compares himself to anything was when he compared himself to Mammon. He said, you cannot serve God and only one place, whole Bible, is to show you clearly that this is crucial. You must at every point in your life have your trust in God and not in things. You got mercy here. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Amen. Shout them that are rich in this world that they should not be high minded or trust in understanding riches, but in the living God who gives us all things richly to enjoy. So God is saying that He's the one that gives things richly to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So don't think that God is a bad God or a wicked God. Mm -hmm. Like I always tell people, God is the one. God is everything that we see in this world that is good. God is there. So I say, ah, no, 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 no. God, God, God is not the one behind what is happening with Apple. Who gave Mr. Apple brain? Imagine when he's thinking about it. God is just removing the thought. The guy is saying, Coca, what's his name? Or what's the name of the person that he's like, I was thinking about Apple. It's just now, and I just forgot. Because he's thinking about it, God is removing it. He said, ah, you think there's no God at me? God is removing everything. Is God doing that? No. Everything we see today, God is behind it. And he let him go be talking about the next design. God should not speak the light of it. Speak the light. The guy tries to generate electricity, no generator. In that area, anytime he starts, he, he is doing any other thing, there's light. He starts deliberate, no light. God, what my point? God is, God is behind the goodness of the world that we see. Any, if there's any goodness in the world remaining that the earth itself has not destroyed, there are people are causing now trade up and down and just trying to mess up with it. But anyone that remains of it, God is behind. He said, Let the put your trust in it. Finally, look at what he says. He says, Don't trust in uncertain riches because God gives us all things richly to enjoy. He says, Let tell them, charge them that they be good, they do good. And they be rich in good works. What are you supposed to be? Rich in good works. So God, in the new covenant, God is not after you having rich possession. He's after you being rich in 